What's up, everybody? Welcome! Oh, both fog machines are working. To the kind of funny screencast special WrestleMania ranked. I'm Greg. That's Mike. That's Tim. That's Connor. And the best way to enjoy WrestleMania is to celebrate it with us each and every week on our way to the granddaddy of them all. We've invited a member of the wrestling world to pick a WrestleMania match each and every week for us to review and rank before we get to Philadelphia in April. Next week. And Greg, I'm going to exclusively announce here. It's not exclusive at all, but I'm first announcing here that we will be doing, of course, we still have this episode, one more episode of this. Yeah. We will also next week be doing a predictions episode oh. for WrestleMania 40. Uh, that'll be uh, Greg, Mike, me, and Roger. Fingers crossed, unless sure. Greg finds his way to the big event itself. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, even if he's not here, we'll still do it. Excited about all that. Uh, it'll be a fun conversation that'll go up in the same place as this is. And then on Monday after WrestleMania, the Twitch stream that day is going to be all of us here talking about all of our thoughts about hopefully whatever wowed us. All of this will be up on the screencast as well? It will. Excellent. I love yes. that quite a bit. Uh, remember, if you love the stuff we do, which includes random one-off WWE shows all the time, uh, you should support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube. You get all the shows ad-free. You'd get the ability to watch us record them live. And, of course, you'd get the multimedia daily exclusive experience, Greg Way, for your listening and viewing pleasure. You can get the Kind of Funny screencast for free with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe each and every time we do it thank you to our patreon producers carl jacobs kishan patel nathan lamoth karen lindener uh james hastings casey andrew before we go any further connor casey thank you so much for making the time to join us of course ladies and gentlemen connor is the cbs sports trending sports editor and comic book nation host and more importantly than any of that a fellow mizzou tiger what's oh. up connor you're damn right. Mizzou Mafia is rolling deep. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we are excellent. How are you? Where are you broadcasting from? Would you talk to me about what you got two day jobs. Like how do, well, how do you want people to know you? I want people to know me because I am from beautiful downtown Nashville, uh, where I'm currently broadcasting out of in my lovely home. Uh, yeah, you so see, y'all know me uh, from years of covering pro wrestling over at comicbook.com. I recently transitioned back into the sports world with CBS Sports, but I never fully left comic book because I am still with you guys Love every it. Friday live in our downtown studio for Comic Book Nation, where we talk all things geek culture, uh, especially professional wrestling, which is why I am here today. Were you working with uh, Liam over there? Oh yeah, yeah. Liam was Liam is my six foot seven son. I, I love that kid. <laughs> I love this guy. He's he's my favorite person ever. Always rocking the Jordans, looking utterly fantastic. I hate how tall he is, but otherwise, great guy. Oh great, yeah. You know, so frustrating. He's so tall. Yeah. So tall, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, he's been taller than you. I'm. You're as tall as me. So if he's tall, he's very, very tall. What's like his I deal? What's is his he problem? actually he six seven? Something. I, 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 I joke like, it's six seven, but it he's taller than you'd think he'd be, especially when he's on camera. Yeah, sure, fair enough. I get that. A Great little bit. hair too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, Connor, I always like to give a bit of you know the wrestling insight, obviously, into a guest. Talk to me about you and wrestling. I, the big question I have for guests usually is, have you ever had a sabbatical? Did you ever leave it behind, or have you been watching since you started, and when did you start? Well, I started in 2003. I had a next-door wow. neighbor who brought me over to watch the Royal Rumble, and I didn't. I started watching with some regularity in like 2004. Mind you, I'm like 11, so sure. my schedule was not my own at the time. It wasn't until like 2007 that I started watching with any consistency. And even in like college, I never really left. And I started covering it professionally fresh out of college. And thankfully, wherever I've been has kind of given me the opportunity to keep going with that. So that's awesome. I love that. I love that for you. Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. it's time today we're brought to you by shady rays and wwe 2k24 but let's start with a video to explain what match we're watching hey it is the voice of friday night smackdown Corey graves and don't worry greg i forgive you for the incessant text messages and dms begging and pleading me on my day off to make you a video and tell you about my favorite wrestlemania match well you're in luck because I have the greatest WrestleMania match of all time picked out for you guys. Take it all the way back to WrestleMania 7, the career ending match, the retirement match between the Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man Randy Savage, one of my favorites after all of these years, because it's about storytelling. It's about raw emotion from the moment the Warrior begins to doubt the gods and question himself 
to the aftermath where if you don't shed a tear, I don't think you have a heart. Take a look. Let's go back to WrestleMania 7 live from the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena on March 24th, 1991 in front of 16,158 people. And did I hear this correctly, that at some point on commentary, they said that this is the most people at a live wrestling event in history at this point? No, I didn't catch that one. I, I caught the pay-per-view no, stuff it, they kept saying. Okay. Tim, that, that would be a lie, and so was the lie Gorilla was saying, which is, this is the most viewed pay-per-view ever, which is a lie. They just said that because it could potentially have been mm. the biggest pay-per-view ever, and it really wasn't. <laughs> Okay, good to know. <laughs> Listen here, now, Gorilla Monsoon never lied a day in his life, Connor, all right? I want you to know that. Wait, so what What was? Do you know? The, well, they stopped doing the buy rates when we moved to the WWE Network. Before that, I believe it was 28. Got it. Because that was Roxena 1. Quite a show. Yeah. Uh, this okay. is a special one for me to go back to. I remember watching this. Like, you know what I mean? You were talking before the start of the streak, you know, Undertaker doing his thing or watching this match. Like, obviously, I think for so many fans who have been around a while or watch shows like this is awesome. Uh, you know, Miss Elizabeth running to the ring is seared into a lot of people's memory. It definitely was into mine as well. But it was very interesting, I think, getting the video from Corey, watching it and him calling it the best WrestleMania of match. A lot of people pick their favorite or this or that. For him to say that it was the best, is like, damn, that's a bar to put on it. And then to jump in it and have the match build and build and build. And I think, you know, we've been not negative, but we have all been very much like, okay, well, old matches have their place, but they're not per they're not sports entertainment. They're not what we're, you know, usually doing here. Uh, I found myself enjoying this one, Mike. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I was surprised walking out of this going, man, that was rad. This was a really good time. And I think we saw something different in last week's match when we really took back in time and go, did they have it production-wise? Did they see the vision? Oddly enough, this one was better than last week's when it came to the hype package and kind of knowing where we need to go as a viewer watching this. And that's what I felt of. I got the backstory. We got a really good, great match, and then we had a, a great cap to it all. So I am excited to talk about this one because I thought it was pretty rad. Okay. Well, let's go to the tale of the tape, ladies and gentlemen, and start with the hype package itself. When I talk hype packages, I have to go to Tim Gettys. Mm -hmm. What did you think of this WrestleMania 11, or I'm sorry, 7, 1991 package? <sighs> all right. First off, it wasn't a package. Uh, it was a, a clip show at best, and it was not an organized one at that. Um, <laughs> they literally, there was like very little thought put into this. This was definitely just like, hey, let's just show you a couple moments that have happened uh, the last couple months without any editing and without any commentary, without any music. Here were just a bunch of clips playing. Very bizarre, very different times. I think that method could work, actually. Yeah. This is not the way to do it. Having said that, I went into this match knowing nothing about either, either of these two men besides the fact that they're iconic. Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man Randy Savage. You know these names even if you don't know wrestling. And I, I'm aware enough of a couple of the things because I played video games. I know the, oh, yeah, I know all that stuff, right? I know, I know the the um, frills coming off of the, the jacket, uh, which is just awesome. I know the, the, the pump Damn, it up and all that so stuff. cool. Ultimate Warrior, I know his name. And that's about it. And I know the face paint. This match, the the um, lead into it, all of that, I was like, oh man, I'm con I'm scared, I'm confused. The the hype package did not do the job it needed to to get me where I need to be. Yeah, or so I thought. Because then once the match starts going, I'm realizing I think it told me everything I need to know. So was it a good hype package for the hype? Absolutely not. Did it do its job? I think you know I I'm not giving it a high score, but it's not even though it was barely a hype package, I'd still give it probably like a two out of five. Maybe a three. I could argue it because not knowing where we were in this world, they did a good job of putting me there. See, for me, I jump immediately to a three out of five, an okay on the kind of funny scale. Uh, you know, I go through here and I think what I, there is a, we, there's a lack of, like you're saying, continuity. It is a clip thing, but again, it sets up why we're here, right? And I think, you know, you go through it, uh, you know, when fucking Warriors. Uh, over Sherry and she's on her knees and then it's like I think you could use a voiceover sure but you know to show Macho King fucking him over in the Royal Rumble with the sneak attack the scepter shot and it shatter all over like you're right it brings you to why we're here and what we're doing I think it lacks 
why this needs to be a career ending thing. We've talked about that before when we looked at, you know, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret the Hitman Hart, where it was like, just kind of drops up. Oh, and it's a submission match. Like, oh, okay. Why? why? Like, I, I missed that storytelling device. Yeah. But I think in so many ways, especially to compare it last week to Double J and R- Razor Ramon, I was like, I buy this more. I understand how we built to this more. Connor, does that make sense to you? It does. My thing with this era of WrestleMania is that, to, to use a modern expression, we're so far from God when it comes to <laughs> the pomp and pageantry yeah. of what WrestleMania has become. To even just having a theme song, you know, brought in for each mania, to have the big stage with all of the pyro and all of the spectacle that goes with it. It took them so long to figure out to start doing that, that if you watch this show, other than the drapes and the little curtains hanging above the ceiling, <laughs> there's nothing that really tells you this is a WrestleMania show. It just looks like any other WWF show from the time. I like I so, like their color palette of the red, white, and blue. They really drove all that home. They got it throughout the sports uh, memorial. I was like, okay, cool. But then you look at the, you know, the pre-show match package. You're not getting something like the Daniel Bryan thing from 30 or even the Rock Austin from 17. It's just, hey, here are the literal clips that led to this match. And for that, I give it a two out of five because it gets the job done and yep. nothing else. Okay. Okay. I want to jump in real quick uh, just because we're talking about these high packages and the type of package that this was where it was just showing the, the clips and trying to tell the story like you were saying there, Greg. And just real quick, I just want to get hyped looking forward because I want it on record right now that I'm expecting the WrestleMania 40 hype package to be the greatest one we've ever seen. Yeah. I think we're about to get a my way level one because you look at the Raws they've been doing, you look at the SmackDowns they've yeah. been doing, the way they've the, been giving them the material. That, yeah. They are getting B-roll. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. are getting the shots. They are getting the setup to make the ultimate <laughs> hype package, man. And I just can't freaking wait to see it. So anyway, I just want to share the, my excitement with everyone I appreciate for a that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Master of Hype Snowbike, Mike, where are you coming on this I package? like that. I, I'm with the guys over here. I am two out of five. Okay. Uh, I am very happy that we got a hype package because last week it felt like we didn't have a hype package. So it is cool that, like, you, at least you're giving me some sort of background knowledge into what is going on. And as the casual viewer who knows about Miss Elizabeth just Elizabeth, a little bit, I was like, is that Miss Elizabeth? Because I don't know who this lady is right now. And it really threw me off without a voiceover, without any like, hey, this is where we're at to set the stage. I was like, okay, well, I don't know if that's her anymore. I don't know what's going it's on. It's an with awkward transition Macho where <laughs> we go. I mean, I have that under entrance, but it's all here, right? Of just like Gorilla and Bobby. And then and Gorilla's like, let's go to Howard Finkel. Yes. He starts talking and Bobby's like, wait, wait, what is that? Is that? Uh? And they take forever to cut to Miss Elizabeth over there. <laughs> yeah, that was my only problem is I, I really was lost with that moment. <laughs> But I thought for the hype package, I clearly saw that Macho Man had been getting involved with the Ultimate Warriors business. He's been kind of throwing some cheap shots at him. They clearly have been using Miss Sherry. The Sensational Sherry, yeah. The Sensational Queen Sherry, Sherry which I is think an incredible point. name. Yeah, she but, lost uh, me, though. Like, I, I didn't understand what was going on with her. Oh, I loved it. I love. I mean, I'm with you. She's evil. Great energy. (laughs) She's definitely evil. No context for me. I wish there was. Yeah, yeah. No context for a a, you know the new viewer. But to build up to it, it had what I needed to understand. Oh, these two are going to grudge right now, and we're going to go figure it out. And so I I was happy with the hype package. Not the best that we've ever seen. Not the worst though. So two from all of you, a three for me. I think it's fine. It's okay. But let's get on to entrances then. Okay. Mm. Again, as an old school fan. And, and, and I, I'm not friend by any matter, acquaintance of Howard Finkel. I got to work with the Fink once at IGN. Wow. He came in for Legends of WrestleMania, and we shot all day long doing a, me and Eric Hart and him, doing a video that looked like it was pulled from the 80s. So I got to hang out with Howard Finkel, and he was awesome. just, he was everything I wanted Howard Finkel to be, right? Because he was the voice of WWE. He knew everything. He was super nice. The story I always, I told when he passed was that, Years afterwards, anytime uh, the person who was in he- uh, the head of WWE video game PR at the time, THQ now 2K, when she would bump into Finkel, eventually he would go, and, How's my friend Gregory James Miller? Because that's what they called me to try to make it seem old or whatever. And I was in a weird outfit. It, he was the best. So I love when they say, Let's go to Howard Finkel and Howard Finkel's in the ring to do so it and cool. have the voice or whatever. Uh, but they, as we already talked about, show Elizabeth in the audience. For some reason, not in the front row. <laughs> like she's in row two. They, they thought that would be more believable to put her behind some kids or whatever. Okay. 
fine, I guess, whatever. And then fucking Macho Man's music hits, and I fucking love Macho Man's music. Is this his music always? Yeah. Was dun, this a, yeah. a, a dun, King dun, variant or was dun, dun, dun. No, this is the graduation oh, song? Graduation really? song, yeah. Wow, that's just, what he does. Hey, here's some stock music. Yeah, cool. Making yeah. your character. Yeah, I kind of respect it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect that. It, it didn't hit. I thought the Macho Man would have a little bit better. See, music, it's the to build, though. Is what I always loved about okay. Macho Man. Is it's like <laughs> dun 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 dun. And then he comes out, arms up, spins around. He's the pomp and circumstance, right? His song sets it up that it's whatever, and then he's just freaking crushing it. But anyways, I digress. I love Macho Man's entrance. I think, you know, the note I have down here that they call out, of course, is the fact that Ultimate Warrior doesn't sprint to the ring. Like, Ultimate Warrior's whole shtick, Mike, was he's he's out 100 miles an hour from Gorilla. Like, he would run out. He'd be blown up by the time he got in the ring from just running. <laughs> and so they, the fact that he was able to restrain himself to walk and set up the fact that, like, this is something different. Connor, I see you nodding. That meant something to me. It did, and it's it's the big giveaway that this is a match that's important. Um, as far as the, the entrances go, uh, Mike and Tim, to kind of give you some context, the reason they're calling him the Macho King, Randy Savage, is that he had won King of the Ring recently oh. and had kind of taken on the Regal title. And honestly, he's one of the very few guys to ever take that gimmick because there's been about a dozen or so of them and actually use it to enhance his character. He was already the loud, bombastic, snap into a Slim Jim guy, but now you had, gave him the excuse to wear these big crowns and come out to the ring with uh, Sensational Sherry's got looking like a walking tiara, and they're walking out to the ring, and that giant platform is carrying oh. them. Like, that would work today yep. and get over incredibly well. But for so many guys, when you have the King of the Ring, they're like, yeah, I guess I have this scepter now and a crown, but Macho Man was like, no, give me that. I'm going to use it. Yeah. Last man to try to do it, Xavier Woods. Oh, yeah. They took it away from him, I digress. Mike, what did you think of the entrances? I loved the entrances. I thought these entrances were rad. I mean, we're talking about some burly dudes carrying you and Sherry to the ring. It was awesome, right? And I loved the two of them coming down. Sherry looks evil, like you said. The two of them look pretty evil to me right off the rip. Like, that's not the macho man that I picture my Mm -hmm. mind with the outfit that he has but the two of them they look evil i love being carried in i think it is very interesting to cut to miss elizabeth who is sitting down mind you everyone in the stands is standing up she's just sitting down it's like so concerned what is she doing you know what i mean what's going on here is now my mind starts to race over to that but macho man with the hand gestures right when he points to sherry and goes no you're over there right he does it twice it's like man nobody's cooler looking than that guy right and of course, we'll put a little note of Sherry opening up the ropes for him. I like that at the beginning now that I've seen the end. And Ultimate Warrior. I mean, come on. When he does the pump up, it's the coolest. His outfit, phenomenal. He has the belt on his ass, and it says, it's bigger than this. Is sick. Macho Man and his face on the knee pads is sick. Such unhinged behavior. Yeah. He's unhinged. like, I'm going to tell this entire storyline through my outfit. You're like, okay. And I love every moment of it, right? I mean, from the outfit coming off to some tassels being left on the ground to the ref having to pick it up, it is wild. It is gigantic. It's awesome. It is wrestling, and I love it. I- I'm a, you know what? I'm going to give this a solid four out of five. It was great. That's what I did too. Four out of five. I had a great time with this. Timmy? I struggle to see why it's not a five. That's my nice, problem. Nice. I think I'm giving it a four as well. Yeah. But I think that's just because of what I look for from the entrances and all this stuff. But for, I always like talking about the goal and did they achieve it? Yes. I do not think that this era of wrestling can have better entrances for these we often call them cartoon characters you know the action figure era of 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 w w w w f at the time i think about like the ice creams that they had you know what i mean this is very much to me the pre-attitude era there was that time in between where there's sean michaels coming in from the zip line i don't know exactly when that was but like obviously i appreciate that stuff more i think that's super cool this though this is the cartoon character entrance. This is the, these are not human beings. They are straight up characters. Um, they are not trying to be cool. They are trying to be entertaining. And that is 
solely it. And I was entertained from the first second that they come out. Love the outfits. Love the the pomp and circumstance. Like the song and the the chariot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the gondola ride, if you will. Yeah. Uh, propelled by human beings. Um, but the two of them up there, their outfits, like the way that you're seeing them and like... You get it. Them calling him the Macho King. All of it, like, I I put together the context of King of the Ring and all that stuff, but they did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they sold me. I was like, I didn't know going in. Why is Macho Man a king, like, doing this regal stuff? That makes sense. They did a great job elevating it there. And, yeah, Ultimate Warrior coming out. Love the outfit. You start to understand his character a lot more, too. Like, I didn't realize that he ran to the ring. Now I'm getting that because him in the match, I don't understand how a man can move that quickly for th that sustained duration. Yeah. It was one of the more impressive physical feats I've ever seen. But yeah, entrances, I'm going to I'm gonna go for, but um, I have never heard uh, Ultimate Warrior. I've never heard either of their theme song, I guess. And I was wowed in different ways for both of them. Macho Man just didn't expect that, but I, I thought it was great. I thought it was going to be more of like a one-off gimmicky thing, and I thought it worked there. But if that's his thing, I think it's even cooler. Uh, Ultimate Warriors theme, it is perfect for that man. Like that that sound of that the cheesy guitar and everything about it. It's like that is that's the sound of wrestling, you know? hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why this match has stood the test of time for so many people of like, this is a great snapshot of professional wrestling in the eighties, well, nineties, right? Of like what it was, the action figure era, everything you've nailed. Shawn Michaels, uh zipline entrance, WrestleMania twelve. Okay, cool. So a fair amount of years away from yeah. this. Yeah. Last I think thing he's, I uh, say, he's rockers in this, right? I think he might even open the show with Marty Jannetty. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I want to, um, we'll bring this up throughout the episode, I'm sure, in different ways. But something I really loved about the entrances and the, the, the commentary setting the stage for where we're at and cutting to Elizabeth in the audience. Some of this is just because of the cameras used and the way that they shot things in the early 90s here. This feels like a Rocky movie. Like straight yes. up the way the cinematography mm. and like specifically the end shot that we'll get to for the finale. But like even in the intro, the way that it's shot, it feels cinematic as hell what, for what cinema was back then. And like there's something really special about that because it's authentic as hell. Two of my notes here are the crowd loves this shit because yep. they're so into it in LA. And then secondly, I put it seems all caps intimate. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, obviously an arena or, a you know, a, a stage coliseum arena show. But the way they're packed in and the way they are all in on it, right? Like throughout this show, we've talked about, and I mean the many episodes of it, right? The crowd gets lost. This isn't there. They start to warm up here. Like this crowd is in from the get go, oh, yeah. right? And it's like, that's awesome. Again, like I think out of context and out of uh, time to get here and be like, but why is it a career ending? Let alone the fact that it wasn't even remotely a career ender, right? It was just to give Macho Man time off. I think originally to try to have a kid, if that's right, or that's internet rumor. I forget. It is right. Okay. Thank you, Connor, for keeping me honest. Uh, the fact that they, it's like whatever, but it's just like the that's audience is tell me that. in. I on wanted it. this to be the end. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh it's God. so wild. What a great like, end that would have been. Yeah. A little bit better lead up, just like the submission match of like, I'd like to know a little bit sooner or clearer, but like, yeah, it was like, one of them's going to ride off into the LA sunset and never come back. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? Yeah. And then I'm looking over <laughs> at my friend like, so does he never wrestle again? What? Oh no, of course they come back. Mike. I'm like, okay, well I want... I want to see. I think it's a, it is right. Connor is a, it, like an inverse, right? Where like a year later, Warrior is no longer with the company, but Macho Man is active again. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. So that that's the thing about this match in its entirety. Like having no nostalgia for this, I never watched it in, in its entirety until building up to this episode, simply because I knew about the ending and I'd watched the ending because of its reputation, but not the match in its entirety. And I was thinking, with all the context of 2024, this match should not work. Because yeah. the retirement stipulation is bogus. Mo Macho Man's winning the world title a year from now. The uh, relationship that has the big emotional ending, yeah, they made a Dark Side of the Ring episode about that, and oh, not for no. a good reason. Fuck. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it, it's bad. Uh, this this pay-per-view itself is actually pretty notorious for trying to play off of the Gulf War at the time with Sergeant Slaughter as the, as the WWF champion who was trying to say, I'm surrendering my country. There's a lot that shouldn't work, and yet it does. And it does because of how complete of a performer Randy Savage was. Mm, mm, mm. Be in there with somebody who, in a time when wrestling was very simple, Ultimate Warrior was limited. And Savage was able to get a classic out of him. And only a very small handful of people could do that. Dang, and I see everything it. That... from start to finish is him at 110%. And I think... That's my thing about it, right? As somebody who's 
lineage with wrestling has gone on. And I would say, even at the time, I was not a warrior guy. I was a Hogan guy when they faced off, right? And so for a warrior to burn out the way he did and had bad blood, blah, 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 like even for him to eventually come back and make good on it all. I remember I wasn't a warrior fan then. And I never, as I grew up and learned about professional wrestling, found anything of like, Oh, I had him wrong. Or I didn't know that, you know, it was anything I heard more about him. I was like, nah, this guy ain't it. And so when Corey picks this match, I was like, damn, like, yeah, I know the ending is great. Like I know that part, but can the match actually be that good? And I think that was something that surprised me. And we'll talk about it. Of course, right after I confirm Connor, what are you giving entrances? Oh, sorry. I'm giving entrances four out of five. Great. For it to be five, it needs to be like, I need to remember it forever. Right. And so I, for this one, I just four is across the board then. And yeah, I want to talk about that match right after I remind you about the kind of funny membership. If you have the kind of funny membership, of course, you could be watching us record the show live right now, like Mr. Hawks's, Kevin A. Sexes, Toby Blue are. Uh, you could also get it ad free, like all of our other shows. Uh, you could get the, you watch them live, like all of our other afternoon podcasts. And of course, you could get my daily multimedia experience, Greg Way, as a video and MP3. But you're not using your kind of funny membership. So here's a word from our sponsors. This episode of WrestleMania Ranked is brought to you by WWE 2K24. Step into the ring and finish your story with new match types like ambulance and casket matches, a roster of more than 200 superstars and legends, new career mode experiences, and so much more. The latest installment of the franchise features several advancements, including 2K Showcase of the Immortals. 40 years in the making, WWE 2K24's Showcase Mode puts players in control, playing through the most iconic moments in WrestleMania history. As 2K's distinctive slingshot tech seamlessly morphs from gameplay to live action footage and back again for the most immersive WrestleMania video game experience to date. Finish your story with standard edition cover superstar, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, or deluxe edition cover superstars Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. When WWE 2K24 launches on March 5th with early access and March 8th worldwide. Pre-order WWE 2K24 and receive one month of Peacock, US only, and WWE 2K23 digital only to play while you wait. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium color rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and greens. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it is Tim looking dope doing his Pokemon Go walks, Snow Mike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her Tangle Free Shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it, they've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange them or return them for free within 30 days. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that is ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off polarized sunglasses. The match itself, Snowbike Mike, take it away. Awesome. That's all I have to say about this. This match was awesome. I am truly blown away. We've been rolling it back in time. And I think Connor said it so well, right? Like, there's not a big, diverse move set going on here. It is pretty much stick to the book of just two big dudes smacking man meat, right? And it was fun all the way through. I think the use of the third person Sherry. sensational Sherry was fun, right? Always I'm such keeping, a video game dork. I was like, yeah, yeah. perspective? What is uh, he? Uh, third person camera? I don't know. Keep in the ultimate warrior on his toes, getting involved, bouncing in and out kind of wildly, right? Like, I mean... There was fun moments throughout, and I got to see two, like, w when you think wrestling, you think big, burly dudes, and you saw that, right? When Ultimate Warrior catches Macho Man in midair and kind of smiles, you're like, oh, yeah, that's exactly oh, yeah. what I want out of WWE wrestling. And there was awesome moves throughout. My, my one negative is it did go a little long. 
Right? Like, mm. I liked the ending. I don't like the end of the match, the finisher, we'll call it. But, like, the end afterwards, good. But it just felt like there was a couple of moments that really took us up to the peak. And that might have been the good calling card. But we went a little bit longer. And the end kind of just tapered off. And it ended. And it was like, oh. But then you get picked back up at the end of it all. But I like this a lot. We were outside the ring. We're in the ring. We're throwing chairs at each other. It was a good use of these two dudes. I think, you know, Connor really put me on. Like, man, Macho Man did make this guy look really good. Not, you know, that's something that's a novice. I don't see that, right? I don't understand that. But, you know, you look at the move set of the Ultimate Warrior. He's right. Not much is going out of this at all. But I liked it. So you nailed it, Connor. I guess I did. You know, it's it's funny as a, <laughs> as a guy who's not very positive towards Warrior, I will admit that what he did well he was exceptional at, which is the, you've been beating my ass for the last 15 minutes, and now my hands are going to start shaking, and I'm going to start pumping my knees. And when he starts hitting the ropes, you're like, God, it's pure adrenaline. Yeah. But to get to that point, you had to have Savage and Sherry spend a good 15 minutes being like, okay, what the hell can we throw at this guy to actually keep him down? I'm going to cheat every human physically possible way I can. In my When I'm not doing either of my day jobs, guys, I'm a professional wrestling manager. And you only usually get in a match a couple of chances to cheat. Sherry is a menace in this thing. She is terrorizing Warrior and trying to get that ref's back to turn at every other moment. And Savage is like, oh, his back's turned. Low blow. Shot from behind. Throw a chair at him. Throw a chair outside the ring so the ref looks this way and I go this way. It's it's such great psychology. And then for him to be like, I'm just going to start spamming finishers yep. <laughs> where I hit you with an elbow five times when one would always do it. Yeah. And then from there, it's OK. Time for the warrior to make his comeback. It's back into what we talk about with uh, wrestling and storytelling in the ring. And I think even if, and I, I tell me if I'm wrong, but for you guys being dropped in, not knowing much about it, it sets up and protects the warrior as this unstoppable force, right? Where it is that as soon as the match gets going, I was like, okay, cool. Warrior is throwing Savage around, right? But then he starts using the underhead and tactics, right? Starts out thinking him and doing all, and you're like, damn, but then to build to Warrior, of course, as always, shaking the ropes, and they have the great line of like, he's going to the ropes. That's where he gets his energy. Yep. You know what I'm like? Yeah, right. Yeah. Good one, Brain. <laughs> Good one, Brain, on there. But it's like you see that superhero version of the Ultimate Warrior and why kids obviously loved him so much really shine through. He was questioning the gods. He looked up. He Don't said, even get me started on that, that one. Yeah, amazing. when he like, I love he that. leaves the ring. He's like, I'm just gonna go. Like, I'll walk away since I can't beat you. Like, damn. And the that's... ref is yelling at him. Commentary. He's like, the ref told him to come back. You can't leave like this. It was amazing. Time, Tim. The match itself. Yeah, man. I uh, don't think in history there's been a match I've watched that I've had this much of a 180 on from yeah. the beginning to the end. Um, I'm with you, Mike. It was a, a, a bit too long. I'd say maybe a third too long. But that third to me was the beginning third. I, I feel like the second and third parts of this were, it was immaculate. Like, it was just such a ride. But something about the beginning, I was like, and it was probably my bias, but I was like, this is old. Yep. This, this is, uh, there's too much going on. It's, there's like too many characters involved. Like, I don't really fully get it. And it's just like, there's going to be a lot of cheating. There's going to be a lot of whatever. And I kind of just like wrote it off as like, it is exactly what they're showing me. And then there was just some moments where it just it bought me in and I was there and I was like, I am entirely enthralled in this. I am sold. I am watching it. The five elbow drops, like calling them out. And it felt like, why are we doing this much? I love it. Him calling out the gods, questioning himself, leaving. It's like, this is literally what I think is the peak of the comic book superhero uh, wrestlers. And I feel like they did so many fun things. The use of the in the ring, out the ring, everything in between. It was just pure fun and like just pure like, wow, they're really pushing this. And it felt like it mattered as they built the the I quit nature of it all. Like it really felt like I didn't know who's going to win. I didn't know who's going to lose throughout it. And like the way that they got through it and had the end and then were still able to make everyone cheer for Macho Man afterwards. That to me is the ultimate storytelling. And like we saw it with Rock Hogan in a bit, right? But to have that shift of momentum of the audience just being so behind it from the beginning to end, I was really into it. Score wise, it's it's tough for me. Um, I'm somewhere between a three and a four. I think I'll, I'll I'll I'm gonna go four. I'm gonna go four. I appreciate you doing that, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much packed into this. Uh, for me, uh, for scores on the match, I put a five. Like I think it is amazing, and I think part of the amazement is the fact that I'm with you. 
that when you know, granted, we had WrestleMania 11, we we're like, oh, old matches are old. And Corey's like, let's go even older. It was like, all right. And you, so I start off in a place of like, I know I don't like the Warrior usually. What's going to happen? And again, the build that they do so well with it in terms of like, you know, my notes start right of like, first off, them just mugging to the crowd. Right. You know what I mean? Like, again, like you want to talk about again, what an art it is to be a professional wrestler and play off of the audience and the way they're able to throughout this match, keep them at an 11. This audience never mm-hmm. sits down. They are ready. They are in it. They are going, but like gorilla monsoon setting it up that, you know, macho man runs into warrior, right? And he goes like, Whoa, what did I just run into? And then Warrior's just stomping him. Shout out to Sherry who terrified me as a child. Right, and you know, a WWE Hall of Famer, a sensational Sherry, who terrified me as a child, but like also as a loud person, you know how much I love being able to hear myself on a WWE televised event. Her nose, her ringside stuff. She's like, no, and like you can God, hear her yeah. as if she's mic'd. I'm like, that is so fucking perfect, right? And just the way they work that and the go and everything we've seen, and like I hear this place is eating it up, right? And then it's also like again, you know, when you talk about nostalgia and also like the people that like. I love from my childhood to hear Gorilla and Bobby the Brain Heaton call this again is so special. To, again, I haven't heard them in so long, and they were wrestling. You know what I mean? Like they were JR and King, who I also hold on to such a pedestal. But now, you know, Pat and Cole, where you like, you have these aud- these groups, these duos, these trios sometimes that mean so much. And like, this was such a big deal to me, right? And I've said it millions of times in conversations. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on camera, but working with WWE, right? when I started doing stuff with them, not even this is awesome, but the more side stuff. And then I started working with the producer who would eventually go on to get this is awesome on the air. I was doing stuff with him and getting recognized by other WWE people. When I remember somebody at a table, it was one of the up, up, down, and down people that I barely knew then now know very well producer side who was like, don't take this the wrong way. I don't, I don't mean to offend you. Don't take this the wrong way, but you remind me a lot of Bobby, the brain Heenan. And I was like, that is the greatest compliment anybody could give me, right? Because that is my role in anything, right? I am the heel. I am there to be a dick, act like I'm going to win, and then get screwed over, and I'm in a weasel costume, right? Like, that's what I'm doing when I do the heel Greg stuff. And so <clears throat> to go back and be able to hear it and see it and see Bobby and and see him play both sides, it's like, oh, so good. And him and Gorilla's dynamic of Gorilla just shitting on him, but Bobby sometimes always getting out of it was just so special to do it. And there's obviously such a difference in watching a match uh, that is this old, right? You're again, uh, March 1991, remembering Crazy. watching it. And one of my notes as an adult watching something I remember being a kid is a lot more ass shots of Sherry than I remember. So unnecessary. And about the time I wrote that <laughs> note, there is a comment from Bobby from the, from the camera and he goes, a view from our rear camera mm-hmm. and I fucking died. You know what I mean? He's totally talking about it. It's like such a great, like you could slip it by not even the PG era, right? Like the G era yeah. of wrestling slip it by like the dad will, and the parents will get it, but not the kid necessarily. Like, damn, that's special. You know what I mean? And again, the way they just build off it and the way they're insane and what they're doing, right? Like uh, <laughs> there's one line from Bobby in here, right? Of like, uh, uh, Sh- Sherry takes off her shoe right and goes to hit it, but she hits R- Randy instead of him. And Bobby goes, "She's gonna have to answer for that the rest of her life." <laughs> I was like, "God damn, that's awesome!" You know what I mean? <laughs> Let alone this. Uh, whoever loses, how they're gonna feel in the morning? He's gonna be just another ham and egger. I was like, "God, God. fucking, there's something special there, yeah, about there's, this." There's one part where they're like beating each other up, and they go, "As a human, I don't understand it. Everything is on the line. They put everything on the line." <laughs> <laughs> So good. Yeah. And then, yeah, to get the, you know, Macho Man, obviously known for his elbow drop, and it is so picturesque, and it is such an amazing move. And yeah, to get five of those, right, and then still have the warrior get out of it, right, on top of him, you know, just having tried to quit and doing all this different stuff. Like, Can we talk about the Ultimate Warrior running these ropes, though? mm. Like, am I wrong in saying, like, this is, like, the most impressive running of ropes ever? Like, maybe not just this match, but, like, him. I, I've never seen people do that. Like, yeah. it was crazy. Was that like his thing? Yes. Well, he gets That's his energy. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so cool. Yeah. They did it well. What, what? It's the mania where he beats Hogan, right, Connor? Where like Hogan's story is that like they went in, they went for like three minutes, and Warrior's like, "All right, let's go yeah. home." And Hogan's like, "No, we can't go." He's like, "Sit here. I'm gonna put you in a sleeper hold. Catch your breath, you idiot." That's hilarious. Fucking because wrestling. He was blown up. Yeah. Know, probably because the Coke was wearing off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, it's not all athleticism driving the ultimate warrior, it turns out in the end. Um, 
yeah, I thought this match, I put five out of five amazing. I just was, I was so in on it the entire way. Uh, Mike, what is your score? Yeah, I'm going to go four out of five. This was great. I had a ton of fun, and that's what it's all about, having a fun time watching some wrestling. Uh, you guys brought up all the good points. I do want to shout out the face paint, just completely <laughs> getting ripped off so fast. I mean, it is so cool to see the paint, and then you have this moment where you see him, and you're like, Man, that's all gone, bro. Like, his eyeballs are the only thing that still have it. You know, it's so funny. And, uh, yeah, the ref, over the top. The two count. That's how you got to be. That's how you got to be. It was so good. I'll give it to him. Some great poses from the ref. That was a fun time. Connor, what's your score for the match? I'll go five out of five. Here's the dirty secret about the first decade of WrestleMania. There are some unforgettable moments and big players throughout but there is a lot of crap that you got to dig through to find the gems. And this is a great match on a bad mania. And that makes it stand out all the more. I don't know if you guys bothered to watch the whole pay-per-view, but it's like 14 matches. The overwhelming majority of them don't go longer than five minutes. <laughs> and you can't imagine that happening in the modern day. Back then, it is a slog to get through. So this is a, a oasis in the desert. That was always my thing, you know, as somebody who in the Attitude Era was so in and so deep into it and had lived so much of it of like when WrestleMania 2000 hit and WWE did that like, was it 12 hours or 24 hours? I forget. But like you could get a pay-per-view that would like recap every mania going all the way up to WrestleMania 2000 that day. And I did it. And I sat there and like, it was so rough. Those early manias of like, I don't care about any of this and none of this is impressive. Like, to have these kind of moments, these gems, I think is so special. Yeah. But, Connor, kick it off. Talk to me about the finish itself. So, the finish itself, are we talking the the post-match shenanigans or Warrior actually pinning him? Usually, we go from the moves that lead right to the pin and then all the way through. So, like, my first thing sure. is, like, so you know, uh, my last note on the match itself was Warrior getting out of the way of Macho Man's elbow out of the ring, which I thought had great camera work. I think this is one of the things Incredible you talked about top camera of it, or shot up and then yep. bam, nothing there. But then it's right into these shoulder blocks. Right. It goes into the shoulder blocks. Um, Warrior does his usual. He does the press slam into he's going to jump on your back and for that time period that was enough to pin a guy but it, it's not enough and he's just like what do i gotta do he's looking up at the heavens he starts looking at his hand just a little too much as though like his hand is talking to him yeah. he gets out of the ring they're telling him get get back in back in here and he just starts going ham with these shoulder tackles which gorilla keeps calling a spear he, he, he switches it up first one's so a clothesline then it's a I spear was confused by that too okay <laughs> like at no point is it ever a football tackle so sorry monsoon but eventually he just keeps Savage down for a three count. And Sherry is absolutely beside herself, starts beating the hell out of a very injured Randy Savage. She's just lost and her meal poor, ticket. I'm like, yeah, gorilla. <laughs> and then poor Miss Elizabeth can't can't has taken all she can stand and she can't stands no more. She hops over the barricade, which folks don't do that if you're at a show. Um, gets into the <laughs> ring, fights off Sherry. Savage starts shooing her away because she thinks she's Sherry. She doesn't, he doesn't figure out what's happening. He eventually stands up and looks at her, and then the whole crowd erupts yeah. because we haven't seen them together in a ring in over a year. And they just they start talking to each other. Savage is like, after everything I've done, everything that's happened between us, and Elizabeth's just there, like offering out a hug. And Monsoon is like, I think there might still be love here. And then they finally hug. He shouts, she loves him. And you see all these folks in the crowd start crying. And it's emotional as hell. And it's a beautiful moment. Five out of five. <laughs> five out of five, man. <laughs> what easiest. a fucking thing. Uh, uh, just, uh, there's so many great quotes from the commentators here. But like when, when fucking Macho Man loses, Bobby Brain, he goes, oh, my God, no. <laughs> I got the most like Kurt, like I can't believe it thing. Uh, and then when it's all happening, Bo Bobby's like, she loves him, Gorilla. She's loved him from the beginning, Bobby. This is sickening. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so fucking good. What a woman. What a man, <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon says. It's I love so it, good. Tim. I love it. I, I love it too. I love it so much. Honestly, like I feel like the, the I look at the finisher really from the warrior questioning himself all the way through. And I just love the storytelling. I love how stupid it is. But I, I believe it. It's the dumb stuff I want to see. And for it to all like build the way it does, the finishers, everything popping off, the pin. Oh, my God, that pin. Him just putting the one foot so down. So awkward. It, it's so 
action figures. It's so us playing and just putting it down. But the problem down. I had with it was it was like, I feel like that pin would have worked after Macho Man's fifth elbow. You know what I mean? Of like, I feel like that would be the grandiose I've beaten this man yeah. to oblivion. Whereas this one happens and he does it. I'm like, oh, he's going to kick out. Oh, he didn't kick out. That's the pin. Okay. That's, that's true, but maybe I was just worn down by how long the match sure. was. And I, like, I was just so wowed by this guy bouncing off the ropes that like Macho Man being down after that, of after like the storytelling of the gods were behind him now, Greg. Yeah, I know. Like, you know what I mean? So I bought into it different. I loved the final pin. I thought it was like extraordinary. And then, yeah, having um, Elizabeth come. That's her name, right? Yeah, Miss Elizabeth. Oh, my Lord. Every, every, I, it was so stupid seeing her in the crowd throughout the match. And I just started being like, you know what? It's less stupid, less stupid, less stupid. By the time it ends and she's in the ring, I'm just like, am I about to cry right now? This is so fucking awesome. And again, you have all that feeling without the the backstory without no knowing idea. them yeah no yeah. idea and like looking at the uh the all oh, every single woman in the audience that they cut to every single one and they're all bawling <laughs> dude F- bobby the brain heated on one awesome. of them goes maybe your shoes are too tight <laughs> it dude I, I love it man and and it really ending with the her jumping up on his shoulders and then we get that camera shot yeah. and it's it goes in slow-mo just like rocky and i'm like this is so special but the she goes moment, to hold the rope for him the like, moment no, that I'll- got me was her going to the, do the ropes and him being like no and then going down one more rope lower and doing it for her and I'm like I don't know who these people are but they are in love and love is real everybody I might have noticed just now that's fucking Wrestlemania <laughs> And Tim, you say it's love. They were divorced by that September. <sighs> yeah, you know, <laughs> in my crazy. mind, this was the end of Macho Man. Because uh, I, it, for as your own sanity, just do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just do I know that. nothing after this. But like to me, they said it was a retirement match. I thought that it was, and I thought that this was like an amazing final moment for a wrestler. So I'm going to end there in my mind. I like that. Like, yeah, you guys shared it all. It was awesome. The ending was a lot of fun. Uh, when he deadlifts. Macho King over his head and holds him up there is truly like the coolest feat of strength, right? Like this guy, the ultimate warrior is a first timer, the hair, the outfit, the face paint, the movements, right? The, the exaggerated excitement of it all builds to this moment where he lifts him over his head. And it's like, this man is a God. This is the cool. He has the power of the gods on his side. And yeah, when he puts his foot on that, I don't think you can roll reverse that and have Macho Man look as cool as the Ultimate Warrior does. Because sure. I think it's the outfit. It's everything that just took place that only can fit for him. And man, oh man. Yeah, the ending where Sherry loses her marbles and goes crazy. And just seeing Elizabeth run out from the crowd with the heels on amazing the arms going like this. It's just beautiful stuff. It's awesome. And it's amazing. And shout out to Sherry, who just sells that, right? Amazing. She grabs her by the back of the hair, throws her sideways out of the ring, and this woman out of the back of the ring sideways. It was cool to see. I mean, I couldn't move my body like that. So shout out to making it so, just selling it. And yeah, the two of them, right? You get that moment of the beginning where he had Sherry open up the gates for him. And then he's like, no, Miss Elizabeth, I got the ropes this time. The return of good guy, Randy Savage. Beautiful. Back from the darkness. And yeah, I think all in all, it was fun, right? The ultimate warrior is still the hero, but at the same time, Macho Man gets the love. He gets the praise that he deserves. And, you know, in my mind, yeah, he walks away. It's over, right? He doesn't ever come back because that's the retirement match in my mind. I like that a lot. Real quick, I I didn't talk about this. Ultimate Warrior's other finisher or special or whatever it is where he just straight up Crash Bandicoot splats down. Yeah. What an insane move to do. Like, this, the amount of drugs this man must have been on (laughs) to, like, have that move where he just jumps, like, it feels like seven feet in the air and just belly flops down onto the ring without flinching at all. Like you see the frog splashes people do. Yeah. And they yeah, got yeah, a lot yeah. of motion going on. They got stuff going. This dude's just straight up gah, crazy. Dead awesome. stick, right? Just gah. And then my final one here from Gorilla Monsoon. He certainly lost the match, but he got something more valuable. His woman. <laughs> Followed by Bobby the Radiant. Are you sure that was Elizabeth? <laughs> like refusing to believe it. What a fucking so pair. Good. Overall, Tim, mm-hmm. this match, what are you giving it? Man, you know, overall, I think I gave it a five. I appreciate that. Michael? I like that. I'm giving it a four out of five. This was a great match. I had a ton of fun. This is actually one I will remember, and I will definitely talk about. And, like, that's a positive to say. We've 
ranked and reviewed a number of matches so far. And, you know, there's a couple of them I probably wouldn't share with my friends and family. But this one, I'd be like, you know what? If we're going to talk about it, let me share you this one. Okay. That's a positive. Connor? I'll give it a five. If you ask me to put together a short list of matches from this decade and say, hey, from the first 10 WrestleManias, show me some good matches. This is one you have to have on there. Yeah. So for that, it gets a five. Good. Love that. Yeah, I put five out of five as well. Like, I think especially, if, like, again, a summation. And this is what we've talked about a few times. That this match didn't feel like a WrestleMania match. This is, like, such a great glance yes. of, like, this is a WrestleMania match. There is a great point. story that got us here. There is a giant payoff to it. There's a bunch of fun, crazy, cool shit in between or whatever, right? And, again, it's one you'll remember. And even if it's just the clip or the ending or whatever, you'd want to show your friends. This one feels like it gets a Wikipedia entry in, like, the history of wrestling. You sure. know what I mean? It's like, this is, this is, like, a core canon plot point that we need to know about. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reviewed the match which means it's almost time to rank the match. But before then, we, of course, have a very special segment here called One Man Gang Gang, where we invite the one, the only, the biggest WWE fan in the office, Cool Greg, to the mic to say, what did he think of Macho Man versus the one, the only, Ultimate Warrior? Hey, what's up, Connor? Um, dude, I think I believe in love again. That was crazy. <laughs> also, shout out to the one move, uh, Macho did where he grabbed Ultimate Warrior and jumped like from the back and jumped over the ring and kind of like hung him. It's kind of like yeah. a mix of a 619 and a stunner. Yeah. I want to see that all the time. That was super cool. And then other than that, uh, I heard you guys talk about the music. I think it's perfect music to walk off with a baddie on your arm. And I guess you you don't you weren't used to it. You didn't expect it. Yeah. But expecting it, yeah, I think it's perfect. So it's crazy to hear you know, any bad talk. But yeah, five out of five. Yeah. Thanks, Cool G. It was a bad talk. I just that, that's the graduation theme song. And I just in my life would not have expected Macho Man's theme song to be the graduation that's theme crazy. song. But it's I crazy. Love it. <laughs> His, his theme song was almost the graduation song by Vitamin C, but he changed his mind. Class. Like, yes. It's time to rank the matches. Remember, this is episode nine of our 10 episode series, which means our list currently looks like this best to least favorite. Number one, Rock mm. versus Hogan at WrestleMania X8. Number two, Taker versus HBK at WrestleMania 25. Number three, Austin versus Hart, WrestleMania 13. Oh, Number four, Becky versus Bianca at WrestleMania 38. Number five, Kofi versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35. Number six, Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha versus Nia at WrestleMania 33. Number seven, JBL versus Finley at WrestleMania 24. And number eight, Razor Ramon versus Double J, Jeff Jarrett at WrestleMania 11. Timothy, yes. where do you want to rank the Ultimate Warrior versus the Macho King Randy Savage at WrestleMania 7? I feel firm in my choice here. Oh, wow. You're, uh, that's, that's good. I like it when it's yeah. definitive. I, definitively, this would be number four. Fair. I am surprised to say that based on how old this is and whatever, but I, I think that this really, it does have a gravitas to it that I feel like they, they <laughs> nailed the, that was their goal. They achieved it. Um, I love Becky Bianca. I love uh, Kofi Daniels, but I do think that this has a little something special that those don't quite hit in the overall package. See, I'm with you that it has something special and that's why I think I want to put it at, I'd vote three. I'd go, Below Taker HBK at 25 and above Austin Hart at WrestleMania 13. And maybe it's because it's WrestleMania and I want a good story. I want I want the storybook finish. You know what I mean? Whereas obviously Austin Hart is good, but it's a attitude era start storybook finish, right? Of him covered in blood. He's just too tough to tap, blah, 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 blah. And Bret Hart is in oh, such so a bad, bad place. And yet, like this one is such a redemption story where Macho Man gets to be the bad guy but have his redemption at the end and ride off into the sunset and be leaving true love again and da 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 like I think that's a special package overall Mike you were nodding along yeah let me go with you because I'm at three as well I'm right there I, when I break it down in my mind we just praised this <laughs> match I had so much fun during this match I think it's gotta sit right there because I look at the other one compared to it and I'm like I don't think it was as fun and so this is a three for me. Number three. Okay. Connor, where would you put it? And I knew I was going to be the negative guy on this one because while I do love the match, I look at this list and I can't put it anywhere besides six. Oh, here, here's, wow. the thing. Here, here, here's the thing. Rock Hogan, Taker Michaels, Austin Hart, are immortalized as all-time great matches. Not just great WrestleMania matches, but great matches. 
And then I, <laughs> I have to bring myself into it a little bit. I was there for Becky Bianca. I was there for the SummerSlam where Bianca got screwed. Yeah. The and then squash. I was there for the Mania where she got the revenge in a legitimately excellent match. And then Kofi, Daniel Bryan. I saw Kofi's debut in ECW and followed him throughout his career. So for me to see that 11 year journey culminate the way it did is an all timer for me personally. Sure. So fair, 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 fair. those five are kind of locked where I can't move anything into there unless you were like, yeah, uh, Brian in the triple threat at 30. Then, yeah, I could talk about it or Michael's <laughs> take or two. But it from this, I got to put it at six. Okay. So, Tim. Yeah. On this show, we've never had a giant divide, and well, I don't understand the interview ranking. So, what does that mean? Call. You got two. You guys won. Okay. Majority. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's how it goes. Oh, well, good. And I, I could be, you guys almost swayed me to the three. I, I do want to stick on my four, not that it matters for the vote. But um, I, I think that uh, while I did find this one a lot more fun than the Bret Hart uh, Stone Cold one, there's just something about the way that that ended that I feel like you can't replicate. Like there's that, there's a magic there of like how hard they went and like how much that created Stone Cold's character and what I know about him and what I know about him being like he is the toughest son of a bitch that ever lived. Um, that is special. Yeah, you know? for sure. So like, I do think that that edges this one out overall, but like only because it has to. Fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, your list with one episode left to go goes like this. Number one, Rock vs. Hogan. Number two, Taker vs. HBK. Number three, The Ultimate Warrior vs. Randy Savage. Number four, Austin vs. Hart. Number five, Becky Bianca. Number six, Kofi Daniel Bryan. Number seven, Bailey Charlotte, Sasha and Nia. Number eight, JBL and Finley. And number nine, Razor Ramon versus Jeff Jarrett. To find out what we are watching for next week, ladies and gentlemen, we went to the savior of WrestleMania. Drew McIntyre. Told you you would get the video. Sure, it took a minute to arrive, but it's there before the deadline and save the best to last and all that jazz. And that right, jazz. I know it rhymes. <laughs> all right, you want a WrestleMania match? You're going to rate it, rank it, whatever the hell. Nah, not this one. Don't want it ranked. Don't be stupid. This one's different. A lot of people recently. And making jokes about this particular match because they have short-term memories. That's an issue our entire world has. I like to forget pretty quickly, but I want you all to remember how the world was feeling during this time, how you were feeling, the emotions you were feeling, your family were feeling, and how much this WrestleMania meant to you as a wrestling fan, how much this match may have meant to you, or not as a wrestling fan, just your honest opinion, thinking back to that time. I'm talking about McIntyre Lesnar. WrestleMania 36 main event. Check it out. An interesting, fascinating pick, ladies and gentlemen. WrestleMania 36, of course, the COVID WrestleMania. Yeah. Spoilers, the attendance, zero. No yeah. one was there. WWE obviously had to fucking pivot and figure out how they were going to do it. And the Thunderdome. And the, yeah, well, not even. Not this even is, the Thunderdome. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, pre, this is pre yeah. Thunderdome. Yeah, this is just empty arena WrestleMania. They had to do something yeah. or whatever. And I think it's such a fascinating pick from Drew. Uh, I mean, of course, the savior of WrestleMania, looking for his due right now. Uh, but again, to have that moment finally happen for him, right? To have him go after the championship on this level at WrestleMania and have it be the WrestleMania where whew, nobody's mm -hmm. there. It's all locked up. That's crazy. What do you got to say, man? I'm in, man. The Mac. He spoke. I'm in. I'm on <laughs> the Mac. The Mac, baby. I'm in. <laughs> so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Your homework is WrestleMania 36, COVID WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar. Of course, we don't record or do anything with this show in a vacuum. Brock Lesnar, some pretty heinous allegations that he's connected to or whatever. We'll be reviewing this, of course, as Brock Lesnar, the character, not the person uh, in any of that stuff. So don't worry about that. We don't want to shy away from it, but that's going on, obviously, in the background as well. Uh, that's another episode of the kind of funny screencast special WWE WrestleMania ranked Connor. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can people keep up with you? You can keep up with me over on Twitter. I don't call it X at Connor. Casey yeah! <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram and over on YouTube at Connor J Casey and every Friday live on the comic book YouTube channel for comic book nation. This week we are talking Godzilla versus Kong. Ooh. My boy Kong deserves the win in the rematch i'm not counting on it but i want it <laughs> Get out of here. you, you know it's godzilla time come on godzilla, baby. come on team godzilla connor i can't thank you enough for making the time to be with us thank you so much man
Greg, thank you so much. Uh, remember, everybody, each and every week leading up to WrestleMania 40, we're reviewing and ranking a match handpicked by our wrestling friends. If you love what we do, please support us with a kind of funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. Watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show. You can get the kind of funny screencast for free with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Like Tim said, of course, a WrestleMania preview coming your way next week, and then a WrestleMania review following that. On top of, of course, next week, the final episode of WrestleMania ranked. It's a lot of wrestling content, Mike. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm jazzed up. I'll see you all there. It's I be can't a lot wait of fun. for our predictions episode, man. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. We shall see, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, kind of funny for life. <laughs>